Adame five X's Emotiva Emotiva Air Motive fives and whatever she's wearing. So let's back the clock up like three whole fucking three four years four years let's say four years. I buy I buy those. They were cheap, super cheap, like two hundred and eighty dollars a pair. Blew my mind, like, oh my god, I'm gonna have real good powered monitors. And as soon as I got them and reviewed them, I got them and then I went out and bought the sixes. There's the sixes, because these were so good. And all people kept telling me after I reviewed them was, you have to go and review the Atom A5Xs, which is what they're based off of. They're ripping off the A5Xs. And all those are upside down, but you could tell these were like the first affordable set that had an AMT, and that has an AMT, and these are German, Berlin, Germany, not just Germany, Berlin, Germany, and these are China, but um, they're very similar, similar in specs, and uh, we're going to pull the top ones down, because the top ones are the atoms, the ones that are actually being reviewed. I'd like to give a shout out to the Big Knob Studio for controlling our little fetish right now. So here's the thing, I've never had them, I haven't had these hooked up in a long time, I've, they've just been sitting on my shelf, which have now been replaced, these are in the yard sale for the month of November, I'm selling them, because the Atom T5Vs, those, those are now on my shelf, where these were. That's how good the Atom T5Vs are, that I said I have to get rid of something, alright, let's get rid of the Emotivas. So now let's compare this set, which I got for 280 which is a remarkable deal, then their price normally was $400 for the pair, $200 each, and that was for 50 watts a channel, 50 watts a channel, no, 100, 100 watts and 100, some absurd amount, I don't remember the specs on the air motives, I think it's 100 and 100, and then the big sixes are 210 and 200, some ridiculous amount of power, just endless power, because that's what Emotiva does, they make amplifiers. So. They're here in my desk for a last hurrah before, I, before they get locked up in a box and sold because I want to compare them directly to the speaker that everyone says they were copying from, the Atom A5X. And I'm going to tell you the comparison and then I'm going to take those off the top of there and just talk about the Atoms. So here's the Emotivas. And here's the Atoms. Oh, I forgot to tell you the price of the Atoms. These are $1,000 a pair, which is why when I talked about these four years ago, I wasn't like jumping through hoops to get a set of them to compare. Because a 280 realistically $400 not on sale pair of powered monitors, although very similar, <laughs> $1,000 a pair is a double, more than double the cost. So it didn't make any sense for me to go out and throw what little bit of money I had to try to get a set. Now I've come a long way and Adam contacted me and sent me these. They wanted to send me the T5Vs and the T7Vs. And I'm like, uh, bitch, I already bought those. And they were like, oh shit, dog, did you? Well, how about we hook up with this? And I'm like, yeah, dog, do that. So this is a unique experience because I finally get to hear the thing that everyone's been talking about. And now that I finally get to hook these up, and these up, and then the Mackie Big Knob is here, and I'm able to go. And by the way, my ear level is like right at the line between the two, so it's just perfect. Like, yeah, one's upside down, and one's right side up, and this one's closer to the desk, so the low end's gonna be greater than one that's shooting low end up into the sky. I know how sound works, but I'm, I'm making an accoutrement just for this review. Let's talk about what I start. Let's talk about the theory of this. So I sat down and I'm, I'm probably like a lot of people where, oh, I had these, I chose these. Obviously these are gonna be the superior, like I wanted the Emotivas to be as good as the A5Xs. Sitting here, I wanted to goo this. 
<laughs> Fuck yeah. I, I love these speakers. I'm sad I'm selling them. And then I would turn to the A5Xs and they would just be different and worse. And that's not the case. It's a for, here, here's the way it worked. Here's the entirety of the day's setup. Put them on like this, set it up, get the balance, the trim levels right so that they're the same volume. And I'm like, wow, the A5Xs are lacking in low end. So take my screwdriver. Now, if you go to the back of the um, Emotiva, there's literally two, two knobs. Negative four, negative two, negative or and zero for low frequency and negative two or plus two for high frequency that's it this has no other controls not even gain it just is adams here you come back here and you've got three very very precise german adjustments um high shelf low shelf and tweeter level so the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to try to get the low end, which I th the, the Emotivas do better. I want to get the low end out of the Atoms. So let's adjust the Emotivas, leave the Emotivas alone and try to make the Atoms come up to snuff and be as, as good sounding as the Emotivas. So I turned the um, low shelf up three decibels on each and I sat down and went, wow. Well, these do bass just as well as the Emotivas. I'm not sure. Did I ask you, bitch? Shh. Mm. Exactly. Oh, did you recognize Shush? So I tweaked the low end. These controls are specifically here for room corrections. There, if you put it close to a wall, you turn the bass shelf down a little bit. If you pull it out to the middle of a room, it's got nothing to reflect on. You turn the bass shelf up. More bass. So I want more bass. It's sort of floating here in the middle of this space. So once I turn the bass up and it it got better, like it got as much quantity of bass, but it was a little bit too much. So I turned it back down to three notches. Instead of going just click, click like the Emotiva, you literally can come in here and turn and go one. Let's see. Hold on. We're at zero and they're going to six decibels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten notches up and down for all three of these controls. So these are a tweaky set. You get to tweak them, you get to do. So now that I've got the bass to equal what I heard out of the Emotivas, that's when the problems happened. Not for the air, not for the atoms, but for me and the air motives. Cause I went, oh, okay. So now they compete, they sound like, oh wait. Wait, what's that tweeter doing? And you sit there You sit, and there should be an advantage right now to the Emotivas being at the bottom. There should be an advantage. Also, the fact that these are front ported and those are rear ported is going to give you a much different change because that's shooting to the back and using the corner, and this has got to sort of generate all the bass and everything up front. They're both equally, or just, just stupidly heavy, by the way. They're just stupidly heavy. I'm going to pull those down in a sec. Now I think we're done doing this listening test. Tops, Adams. And that's what plus, see, here's the thing that bothers me. I didn't touch the tweeter on that. That's at zero on the atoms. But this one's plus two. And I'm, it's like, I'm, I could just hear that it's not a thousand dollar set of German monitors. Just hear it. I'm just like, oh, oh. If I can get, if I got behind this and lowered the tweeter level down, maybe I could get it to be as dull as the Emotiva. And I'm, look, I love these Emotivas. There is no time I would sit down in front of them and not go, wow. Like there's wow, there's wow in these speakers. I love these speakers, wow. But if you just happen to be sitting at a desk that has a thousand dollar pair of atoms on it. Even upside down and in the completely wrong orientation, it's just like they're too high and they're upside down. They're still going to win this. Now here's the thing, would I rather listen to these or the T5Vs? I'd rather listen to the T5Vs. I think they actually have a bigger driver. I don't know if it's hallucinations that are happening, but it looks bigger up there. It's certainly prettier. This is an ugly thing and we'll get, we'll pull it down and I'll actually look at the, all the features on it because it's got a number of them. But it's not a pretty speaker by any means. And I mean, if you're doing studio work, 
pretty don't mean shit. Can I get this around here without it destroying the whole world and still being plugged in? Heavy, I said. Did I say heavy? I meant it's heavy. I meant it's really heavy. I could get you the actual numbers, but let's not. So, all right, I'll shut it down and I'll plug it. Squeaky, squeaky, squeak. Looking at the back. So, more going on in this than the air motive by a lot. On the front, so looking at the front now. So you got this giant metal tweeter. You got the nice carbon fiber legit surround. This is like a textured thing. It's not carbon fiber. And that's not a phase plug either. It's just pointy. Where this is legit fucking carbon fiber with the cone. Front ports. Here's your power switch. And here's your gain knob. Keep in mind the air motives don't have a gain knob at all. They just are. And then you get a preamp and you control it that way. And now... This goes to negative infinity, or yeah, it's negative infinity, which is a lot. Zero, it has a nice detent, it stops there, and positive 14. Then it's got two LED indicators, and I'm not gonna hook it up to these work, but I'll explain how this works, because both speakers are identical in the back. So here are those three controls that you get, which is really nice. The fact that you have 20 steps between negative six and six on high shelf, low shelf, and tweeter level, actually that goes negative four and positive four decibels. You could really, you could high shelf up six and tweet level up four and you'll taste the Germany and it, just your eyes will bleed. But still rather nice. Here's your mounts. Uh, the air motors have it on the bottom. These are on the back. Power plug switch between 115 and 220, which is set to 115. You got a balanced input. You get an unbalanced input, which is just a straight up RCA. And then you got a stereo link which I've never seen on a powered monitor, not like a professional studio grid powered monitor. By the way, he's been playing for a few hours and the back of this is hot, hot. Now the air motors are no, no, no cool chicken, but like 305 P's and those atoms don't generate heat almost at all. And this, this is 120 degrees, 115 degrees. This is hot. Let me put that in Celsius for you. Hot. 55. I don't know how to do calculations to Celsius. All I know is this is like the dashboard of your car in the summer. Maybe a little cooler than that because that'll just burn your skin off. So, the way the stereo link works with most powered monitors, and I mean, like literally all of them that I've ever used, you got a left speaker, it needs its own power, its own signal. You got a right speaker, it needs its own power, its own signal. With these, you they do need their own power, obviously, but you literally do the unbalanced in on one side. You do the input here, is input and output stereo link to the input. So you get stereo here, and you run one RCA cable out to that one, and you plug it into the stereo link input, and then you can literally control both speakers with one volume knob, the lights in here will come on. So you could put power to both, yes, Signal both sides, left and right, to one side, and you could pick either side. Just reverse right and left. And then one run RCA over, and then you have a, stero a linked up stereo pair of speakers that one volume knob works on. Because if you don't have a Mackie Big Knob Studio, which you all should, or the passive one, the studio passes over there, I was considering using that, but I wanted to be able to trim adjust. Um, you can actually just use them like a set of swans, something or edifiers with a volume knob in the front. That's fucking handy. That's think about how much that saves you. If you just have a DAC, a straight up DAC, an L DAC, uh, a Sanskrit, anything, any DAC you want, and you just okay, I just need a way to control these powered monitors. Well, it comes built in instead of like the air motors are the worst case scenario because there's no knob at all. They're just fucking on which I praised, but at some point it's like, uh, like the Mackies or any other, the JBL 305Ps. You still have to go back, or even the other atoms. You have to go back and there's knobs back there and you adjust them to be even and then you adjust somewhere else. So this is the first pair of monitors that I've ever gotten where you just literally can adjust the volume in the front. And even if you did, well, except for the fluids, which had this weird sliders, which I do not approve of. I don't approve of the sliders, it's weird. So instead of having to do both, you just link them together and you do one. Now it is RCA and don't freak out. Oh, it's not XLR. You can't run XLR to the other one. 
the differences between RCA and XLR is error correcting, error checking at least, or error negating over long lengths. With an XLR you get, I don't have one sitting around, but you get three connectors and ones, and this is gonna be a wrong explanation. I do it wrong every time, but let the noobs understand a little bit. RCA is a middle and a, and a shield and that's it. And your signal comes through the middle and it's done and the shield is just the ground and you could actually pull it out and not even touch it, it still works fine. It's just trying to protect the signal. And that's fine, fucking fine for 10, 12 feet. I would have no problem, even 15 if you're doing like a subwoofer to 20 if you're doing a subwoofer where high frequencies aren't. Because airplanes, radios and cell phones and shit will go through that RCA and touch it. <laughs> and it'll pick up radio waves and everything else after like a 20 foot length. But short runs, 6 foot, 10 foot, I don't concern myself as long as you have a high enough quality. Just enough. Not like, oh man, I gotta spend tons of money on RCAs. Just, just enough. Whereas XLR is three pins. Basically, a hot, a ground, and a, and a neutral check. And again, bad explanation. You could yell at me in the comments. It sends the signal out negative, and it sends the same signal out positive, and then it sends a ground. And what it does is, at the end, if there's a variation in one side of it, it halves the amount of distortion. God, it's a bad explanation. I'm sorry. But it's basically like error checking, which is why when you're on a studio or on a stage, you see ACDC and he's not using a wireless mic, he's using a wired mic. There's a hundred feet of cord running past lights and amps and everything else. And what XLR does is it will negate any of the interference that's coming because it has to interfere both directions and that'll usually never happen. So XLR is absolutely wonderful for studios where you have like 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 foot runs of cables. On a desk, you don't really need balanced to hook things up, which is why this does that setup uh, through just straight up RCAs. You go in six feet, maybe eight feet if you're routing the wire. So that said, I mean, there's not much else to talk about. We want to talk about, all right, how do they sound, Zeos? Well, shit. They can sound as, it's all about the tweeter. It's all about this, this tweeter. They just, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like all the sounds are there. It, th this sounds like it's, a, it's an AMT tweeter and it's doing its job. It's like, wow, it's really sharp and pinpoint. And this sounds correct. Even the, um, the T5Vs, which are gonna stay on my wall and I'm gonna keep over the A5Xs. These might end up in a yard sale, might. I'm just gonna put the word might out there because if I can sell them, I might be able to get another set of monitors to check out. Might. Just wait till the first and the video comes out. You can tune this to work in your situation using the knobs in the back, using the adjustments, finite adjustments. A lot of patience and a lot of sitting there and then you gotta tune left and right. But you can get these to work in any situation and when you do and you put on things, how do I put this? It feels like there's no stuffiness in the room. Because I put many speakers in this desk, right here, this desk, and I love them mostly. And I just enjoy music, I enjoy music. I, I enjoy music, it's not my job to listen to it, but it's my job to try to enjoy it on everything that comes in this desk. And if I can accomplish enjoyment, you get a good review. And if I can't accomplish enjoyment, you get a mediocre to bad review. Well, it takes some tweaking, it takes some time, and it takes some knowledge, and it takes some understanding, but you can enjoy music on these if you really, really try. I'm more impressed by the things that technology does. I'm like, wow, that, I, I, didn't, I don't just sit here. I hadn't sat here with these, when these were the only ones on my desk. I never sat here and went, man, run the jewels. There's a love run the jewels, run the jewels, or, John Lee Hooker, it was always, wow, that tweeter. Sounds really good. And then I would go in my living room and watch, listen to something else. I don't want to say the word sterile, but as fantastical of a tweeter and sound as this can put out, it's not what I would enjoy listening to. This is what you get when you're 
serious about music. And I'm not talking about serious about enjoying it. Now, keep in mind, I'm not everybody. There are some people out there who this would be your end game listening setup. That tweeter would come on, you'd hear everything wrong in your music, and you'd smile and cringe and then cry and then go to bed and then repeat the next day. And some people would listen to this and go, I don't know, man, it, it, it sounds great, but I mean, it just doesn't... I wouldn't. I shouldn't have to integrate a subwoofer into a thousand dollar pair of monitors, and and you shouldn't. If Adam wants to send me one of those subwoofers, I'll keep these around, or I have the Mackie subwoofer down there. And it's a the thing about subwoofers from companies like Adam and Mackie and JBL is they're not special subwoofers, really. Subwoofers don't usually apply to like high end monitors. And you can put them on, but they're usually overpriced. Like, I could probably do things with a Dayton sub that I could do with that $300 Mackie sub. So, they offered me the A8Xs when they offered me these. I said, which ones would you want? And I picked the fives for two reasons. Number one, they're only, only $1,000 a pair. And I figured that would be more attainable if I really, really liked them for anyone who's watching. Secondly, they're smaller. And I don't have a whole lot of space here. So I don't want to have to keep these and the boxes. I don't want to have to keep eights and the boxes for eights around. I'd rather just get the fives. And I think I made the right choice because I have these to compare against. I've got those to compare against. And I can tell you these have one of the finest tweeters I've ever listened to, ever, in anything. But I feel like they lack a little bit of warmth. Whereas these have like a mid, like once you compare them one to the other, it's like, Jesus, these are bassy, out of a mid-range hump. And the tweeter's just not doing the same shit that that tweeter. This tweeter can do some shit. But for our just pleasure listening, which is what I'm mostly doing, eh. It's like the T7Vs. It's like the T7, the big version of the T5Vs. Love the T5Vs because they're, they're a little bit twisted and warm and they do depth. And it's like, oh, yes. And then the 7Vs come on and they get much more uninteresting. Still very good, but not... My nipples don't get hard and rip through my shirt from the sevens, and they do for the fives. And these... I don't know. I, I love explaining to how good... I could sit here for 25 more minutes and tell you about bells and strings and how the imaging is just the... It moves in like a circle. Like it doesn't just move across. And it isn't just depth, it moves like in and out. But you can't just have imaging and make me like you. Then the bass, so the bass was lacking. Front ports will do that too, doesn't have a lot to work with. But you adjust that and you get, you get enough, you get enough bass, but not enough for me to like, it's very, it's very studio monitor. When something says it's a studio monitor, when Beats comes out and says they got the Beats Pro Studio, this should be what they're striving for. No coloration of sound, no excitement, no warmth, just deadpan, neutral, detail, done. They obviously can't do that. This is what does that. These, yes, you could mix on them. They do not sound the same as this. I would, if I could do something, I would rather have these sound more like these than I want these to sound like those. That's probably the best praise I could give them. And if you're doing legit, we, we come out of the, um, I, I do headphone reviews. Is this mission critical work for the world? If I get, you know, killed in a, um, let me think what's least likely to happen. Um, a large airship crash, luxury airship crash. Oh my God, the YouTube, YouTube reviewer Zeus Pantera was killed. Nothing really changes in the world. My job is not mission critical. I listen to headphones. And people who buy them, literally 99% of you are just listening to things to enjoy the music. It's all about music and enjoying music. However, stepping into the realm of $1,000 studio monitors, I'm leaving the comfort zone of, oh, what I say doesn't matter because it's just headphones and who cares? I enjoy these and those and those and these. Once you get into like this sort of range, now people's jobs depend on what I'm saying and what I'm recommending. Because you're mixing the new album from Hans Zimmer to go on the new Batman 4, Batman Forever 2. And if something doesn't sound right for everybody listening to it in multiple places, uh, you're at fault. 
you're at fault. When, when listening to music is so important that your job depends on it, you buy the thousand dollar atoms. You don't fuck around and save money and buy those or the Yamaha HS8s or HS5s or even, even the Mackies. I love the Mackies and I love the T-Series, but as soon as you have your lifeline depending on it, you stop fucking around, you buy these, you buy those fluids, you buy something that makes your music sound like shit. Because a lot of speakers can color your things that sound great. Very few of them are very honest with you. If you remember my review of the fluids, I said these speakers are amazing with amazing sounding music. As soon as you put something on that was recorded a little bit worse than perfect, you know about it. And as soon as you put something on that was recorded a little bit worse than perfect, you fucking know about it. That's my review of the A5Xs. Would I want to... This is like taking a math test every time you listen to music. And I don't want to do that every day. I want my music... To, I'm going to come to you, I'm going to say, look, I 100% understand these speakers, and I 100% understand how important they are, but I don't want to listen to them every day. These will be in a yard sale. These are being in a yard sale. The T5Vs, probably some of the best speakers heard. And then the fluids are up there just because they're so fucking unique, and they get loud as hell. So, I thank you for joining me here. I can't seem to describe like the most improbable dream. But you must believe when I tell you this. God, it's a good soundtrack. And it does exist. Here, let me show you. Chewbacca, what do you think? I've given my speech. This is all part of the daily um, YouTube. Check the sound down in the description. It will do no justice. All right, I, it's a thousand dollar pair of speakers. I need two thousand dollar microphones, and everyone has to listen on a three thousand dollar set of headphones to really even grasp what can come out of these. So it's a useless sound demo, but it's in the description. She, as scantily clad as she is, is in the description. Um, the Patreon, which is where I'll be selling these and these, for if you're in the five dollar month, you get into the yard sales and you get to just throw bids at it. I don't know how much these are going to sell for. We're not there yet. I'd like to get. Like these came to me for free. This was handed to me by Adam. Great. Giving you my review. If you want them, bid on them. If they, this review came out in November or December, it'll be December or January. And the $10 a month tier, if you want to talk to me and all my people who uh, support me, they're on there. Links in the description. I'm. These are almost too good for me to review. Like, there needs to be someone else way more qualified in this sort of level of importance to touch on to these and how import, important listening to music where, you know, people write pink slips if you fuck up. So, yeah. Do I love them? I fear and respect them. And I loved those. But even those, well, you know, T5Vs are the way to go. Again, wallpaper, links. I'll even link this. And my cat's great. And we are done here. Thank you, Adam, for sending these. Um, their sale will help support the channel in its future endeavors. And done.